My name is JT Tokish from the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're going to be demonstrating for you an augmentation technique using the patient's own autographed biceps smash using the Arthrex autograph compression device. So you can see that we've been able to harvest about 40 millimeters of tendon. This gives us plenty of length for our biceps smash because what we want is about 27 millimeters of tendon for the pat. Once that you're happy that the graft is nicely centered within the tissue plate, we simply cover it and then we're going to load it on top of the biceps smash press. Once that's done, then we will start with putting the tension down. We're then going to leave that at the max point for four minutes and the graft then will stay compressed. Once we've given it that four minutes, we're going to loosen it up and the patch is ready to go. The patch is beautifully formed. Now we have to just load it onto the introducer. With the graph now prepared and we're back inside, you can easily see the, the repair that we did viewing from the backside portal. One of the things we've learned is that it's better to come in fairly low and parallel. So for the standard placement of the biceps smash autograph patch, we will generally make, in addition to this standard lateral working portal, one additional anterolateral portal that you can see is placed by the passport cannula here. This will allow the graft spreader with the patch to sit on top. So viewing from the outside, you can see the graft in the graft spreader is prepared nicely. And then all we have to do to insert it is simply slide the wheel back. And this allows us then to enter into the passport. Once it's inside the shoulder, we're gonna bring it directly into the top and center it upon the place that we want to be, we can then open the graft here and set it exactly where we want the graft to go. So oftentimes, the medial row can be fixed by using standard anterior cannula, which we're demonstrating here. I prefer to use simple stitches so that it puts a little bit of tension on the graft. So my first stitch is going to be to come inside of the purple line. I'm gonna come in and cheat just inside that, and then we're gonna insert the fiber stitch RC until it goes down to the depth stop. Once it's there, I will rotate backwards outside. You can see this until I get a very satisfying click. I then simply go forward and then my second arm of this is ready to be deployed. I back this out. I'm gonna come and use this guy over the top of the front side. That guy drops in and I send my fiber stitch wheel back again. And this deploys the second pledget. And then we, all we have to do is remove the fiber stitch. This gives us a loop and a double mattress. I'll turn my attention to the free end of the suture as shown here on the outside. I then simply have to pull this guy down. It's the second limb of our mattress stitch, and it will allow us to come in and compress. This gives us an excellent first anchor stitch medially on the patch. We then bring the tensioner cutter, and this will give us a flush cut down against the patch. We're now gonna repeat that step for our second fiber stitch. I back this guy out, I'm gonna just simply come over the top of the patch again. Again, coming just over the top so I can secure with a medial stitch right over the top on the other end of this. Once I feel like I've got that patch down, I simply bring the other limb of the mattress suture in place and it will cinch that gown completely. Once I've gotten that, we're gonna cut the excess edge Additional stitching is quite easy. One could remove the tissue passer, which is what I generally do now. We can bring the spreader completely out. And now we have our patch in place. Two stitches we found is plenty to do this, but if you wanna really spread out the graft or if you want additional fixation, we found that this technique of throwing in some of the extra stitches has been an excellent way to really spread out the graft over the top. Now I've got a fourth stitch, one on the outside corner. There's our third stitch symmetrically on the anterior lateral aspect. For the lateral row, we wanna be able to be just slightly distal and lateral to where the patch will naturally step down. You're now getting into pretty hard cortical bones. So we felt that that was best done through the, the traditional lateral portal. And so I'm gonna to have to retrieve our stitch through this passport. We're now simply gonna load it on our push lock. You can see we have the self-punching push lock for our lateral row. Now, one thing that's important is that we leave some slack in this lateral row so as not to over-tension it on the patch. So what we like to do is pass point quite a ways 
to leave this slack in place and then come back, and we can always take up slack, then this guy can be punched in directly. This nicely restores the patch directly on top of the tendon. We then cut the excess suture off the graft and our posterior lateral row is complete. The self-punching push lock can then again be introduced into the portal. We then decide where we want this push lock to go and then we're gonna just tap it in. And then an open cutter comes in and finishes up the edge of this. This completes the patch laterally and medially, and you can see that we have now speed bridge repair, and it is now augmented by an autograph biceps tendon. It has my favorite configuration of two stitches medial that are simples to spread the patch out. One suture anteromedial and one suture posteromedial, again, which does a beautiful job of spreading the graft out. And then we've got the critical portion of the rotator cuff repair covered. This is where the tenocytes need to be. And so we wanna be in that position and we've got our posterior lateral push lock in place and our anterior lateral push lock in place as well. And this completes the construct and the repair.